So in this video, we're going to be going over uh, the basics of uh, working with electronics. So it's going to be like the, the basic 101 of uh, what you need to know before you start uh, cracking open your Game Boys, your Super Game Boys, uh, DMG07, uh, link connectors, anything, um, anything that has to deal with small electronics. So we're going to be going over uh, safety, we're going to be going over um, the, the use of a soldering iron, we're going to be going over uh, tinning wires, uh, so on and so forth. Okay, safety. Safety is really important when you're working with anything. When you're working with tools, when you're working with electronics, when you're working with anything that can hold a current. You don't want to get yourself uh, zapped or electrocuted, you don't want to get yourself burned or hurt. If you have long hair, you should probably tie it back so that it doesn't get in the way of uh, your electronics because you're going to be working with a soldering iron and it's really hot and you could definitely like singe off some, uh, some hair like that too. Um, you want to make sure that you are in a well-ventilated area. Uh, the solder fumes are very uh, noxious, so um, if the fumes get in your eyes, they burn like really bad. Like from first-hand experience, it's uh, pretty crazy. Uh, so make sure you're in a well-ventilated area. Also, um, you should also probably wear eye protection too, so that it would also be sort of like a secondary sort of precaution set for the, the solder fumes. Um, you want to make sure that you are aware of uh, the placement of your soldering iron. I have a solder stand so that I could place it off to the side and I don't have to worry about it like rolling around the table or like falling on the ground burning up the carpet. Okay, so we've gone over safety. Uh, we've gone over if you have long hair, please tie it back. Be in a well-ventilated area. Uh, wear eye protection and be aware of where your soldering iron is because it will burn you and it burns anything it touches So uh, make sure it's nice and secure now going over uh, Static electricity, you know when you are wearing socks and you're like running around the house uh, and uh, on carpet and you go to reach for the doorknob to your room or to like the bathroom or wherever and you get the little zap at the tips of your fingers uh, that zap is static electricity now um, when you get zapped it's like no big deal it's like bzz, okay cool you know whatever uh, but static electricity that can definitely mess up the circuit board on whatever it is you're working on so um, you could blow out fuses, you could you could just fry stuff, you could fry the CPU, anything. Like it's it's like really, really bad. So um I've heard of people uh recommending of uh taking your socks off when you um when you work with electronics. The thing is with that is that you can take your socks off and you can still be holding like a static charge. So um the better thing to do is to actually touch a bare metal source. So if you are, um, if you are, if you have static electricity built up, um, you'll touch the bare metal source, it'll zap, and then uh, that static le electricity will discharge, and then you'll be good to go. The other thing about like not wearing socks is that uh, when you're working on these electronics, chances are you'll be sitting down, and it's not like you'll be walking around on the carpet in your socks while you're doing this. When you're working so. on uh, Game Boys or small electronics or whatever, um, you most likely will not be um, building up any sort of uh, static charge while you're, uh, while you're working on them. So uh, let's get started with the, uh, the soldering iron. Here we have a soldering iron and I purchased this one from Radio Shack and it is rated at 15 watts. There are other soldering irons that are rated at higher wattages. However, I found that the 15 watt um, soldering iron works very well with small electronics. Uh, the higher uh, in watts that you go with the rating of the soldering iron, the hotter that it can get. So the uh, the ones that are higher wattages than 15, those are usually used for um, larger electronics. Okay, so here we have a soldering iron stand. Now what it does is that it helps keep the soldering iron out of the way when you're not using it. So um, you won't have to worry about putting it on the table and um, maybe it might tip over or the it might fall off the table and it might start burning stuff like the carpet. So. Um, the soldering iron stand uh, is used to just hold it while you're not using it. 
So if we look at the tip of the soldering iron, we see that there is buildup. Um, now the soldering iron, the tip is supposed to look like a bare metal. Now, um, if there's too much buildup, then you'll have issues with getting the solder to melt or heating up the area that you're trying to heat up on the circuit board. Um, the sponge here is meant to clean off the tip of the, um, the soldering iron. So what you would do after each use, um, you would go and you would uh, turn the soldering iron and to the tip and you would clean off the end of the soldering iron. Now, um, I found uh, a better way for me, what I like to do is that I like to take the, the tip of the soldering iron and I like to use uh, a blade and just kind of scrape off the end of the soldering iron so that I would scrape off all of the um, all of the extra uh, buildup there. So let's uh, scrape off a little bit here so we can see if we get a comparison. But already we're scraping off a good amount of the buildup on the tip. And let's see if we can see this. Now, there are parts where it's, uh, it's real shiny and that's uh, the bare tip of the soldering iron. That's what we want.